As promised, we're here to serve. Talking about the Bears Season 3 Series Review, me and Ray are back to talk about Season 3. What's going on? Hey, hey. Craziness, craziness, craziness yet again. Amazing cast, of course. Amazing show. But what did we think about it? Now, to be fair, neither one of us has talked about our feelings on season three. So this will be our first time breaking it open and talking about it. We will be dissecting certain episodes. So if you haven't seen season three, go and check it out. If you've only seen season two, go and check out our full spoiler discussion on that. We literally just had it. That's why we look exactly the same. Um, but it's the same <laughs> amount of episodes, 10 episodes total. So I'm going to let you go first. Okay. What did you think of season three of The Bear? Okay. Um, I'll be honest. For me, it doesn't quite match up to the quality of season one and season two. Um, but that doesn't mean that I didn't really enjoy it. I did really enjoy it. I <laughs> re- looking at you like, I know. No. <laughs> I mean, I rewatched it just like I watched the other seasons. You know, I... I really like this show. It gets you really attached to all of the characters and their individual growth. And I think that this season, I don't, it, I was kind of getting the feeling like they weren't quite ready to propel the story forward. So they kept taking a few steps back into the past here and there. Um, not that that's totally a bad thing. Um, I particularly really liked Tina's episode. Um, I can relate a lot to you know suddenly having like a lot of time on your hands and not knowing what to do with yourself and not feeling good about yourself because you're not being productive like she's the type of person who needs to be doing something and to you know be making a difference however small it is in order to feel good about herself so i enjoyed that little um well, that 30 minute flashback, really. <laughs> I was going to call it a little flashback. It was not a little flashback. Because um, I think it was really important. We knew that she loved Mikey. Yeah. Now we know exactly why she loves mm-hmm. Mikey so much. He was just incredibly good to her um, as a complete stranger and uh, really was her saving grace when she needed it the most. Um, so I really liked that. Um, did you have a favorite episode this season? Oh, yeah, Napkins, for sure. Napkins, Napkins. with Tina, uh, episode yeah. six, was absolutely yeah. my yeah. favorite episode because mm-hmm. e- I, technically, if you've never seen The Bear and you gave somebody this episode, yeah. you'd be like, this is amazing. Yeah. Because it's it's not just, um, like you said, really relatable. Um, it's human. Yeah. Like you, you see somebody, you know, uh, crying and somebody, it's like, normally you can imagine somebody like, yo, she's crying over there. You got to do something. You're the owner. Like, they were like, tell her to stop. Like, <laughs> like, she's stop, her, stop her from crying. She's going to scare the customers. Like, I don't know what to do. You know? And he just talks because that's who he yeah. is. And, you know, she's like, I'm a G. I'm, I didn't have no thug tears or nothing. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I, I wasn't, like, weeping, but right. I was crying a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it just was such a human conversation. And how what led her up to that point literally felt like destiny. Like, you've never seen the show, and they started from this moment, and they started from first episode of The Bear. Like, it'd be still. Um, it was amazing. It, it was yeah. The thing I'll say about the season as a whole, even though I have some issues, this was well crafted. Like the blocking, the cinematography, the shots, the the acting. Everybody's acting has excelled. Like no one has become stagnant. They've elevated the way that the progression of these characters are going. I think every single character from an acting standpoint is on it. The issue with this season is that they are unfortunately left stagnant. This scene right here, okay, this scene yeah. right here, and we'll pick up one more scene, and this scene right here, this whole season, we're stuck right at the same as that place, and we have not moved forward at all. And I hate to say it that way, but I've yeah. got to 
I've got to be honest with what I mean by this. Let's take Sydney, for instance, right? Sydney, from the end of the last season, we saw her hunched over, throwing up, telling her dad, like, I think I got it. I think I, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But from that moment, like, nothing has really progressed outside of the fact that for whatever reason, she's lost her ability to be able to hone her craft. If anything that was always working, whether if it was the diner breaking down, whether it was her relationship with Carmi, her understanding within herself, like she isn't even comfortable being able to cook or refine for herself. And it feels like it's setting her back as a character because we know what she's capable of. We know what she's done. And I mean, there's not to say that people don't have like pitfalls and things blocking them. And there's absolutely a lot of things going. But unfortunately, the person that's in the center of this, Carmi, he's just stuck. Like, he's not moving forward at all. And it unfortunately, it invokes the fear that I had from last season is that Claire is this thing that's just blocking the progression. And I'm not even talking about uh, Sydney and Carmen's relationship. I'm talking about the whole entire show because he had gotten to this very interesting moot point. And he was evolving into something very interesting and promising. And yes, she represented the emotional side that he really needed, but he also was dealing with his trauma at the same exact time. And instead of dealing with it, the whole entire season, Carmi is just progressively throwing everyone away. <laughs> everyone. Facts. From Richie to Sydney to the team, like, I mean, everyone except for Marcus. Like, for some reason, Marcus is like, I don't care. This man Carmen's crazy. Like, I, I'm dealing with loss of life right now, but I'm Marcus still- is Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. Marcus is like, I'm, I'm good, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I can yeah. take it. Like, you you, you got these non-negotiables, give them to me. I'll eat them. I, I got it. But right. everything that Carmen is doing, like, he's entitled, like, he's making these brash rules. Now, the thing that's so sad is I, and I said it last season, like I get why he does things and he does things in a very specific way because he's very methodical in the way he thinks, but the, his, the way he goes about doing it, he learned the first season that you can't just say this. You have to earn it. You have to earn your respect of how these people effectively understand you as a leader. And his whole entire season, like he was pushing everyone away and i and what hurt me the most was his relationship with richie even by the end of the season it still wasn't good yeah you know and it's like the first thing that he tried to do in this season is to try to fix his relationship with richie like he leaves him that voicemail and he says i love you and it's uh, i love the way that they that that scene is filmed because we kind of think that he might be calling claire but then we see that he's actually calling richie um but then even that heartfelt apology is like so not enough for Richie, as we can see. Um, they can't get through a conversation without saying fuck you to one another, um, no. which uh, honestly was, I enjoyed it. It was pretty hilarious, but it's also sad. Um, and I did expect them to kind of make up by the end of the season. Um, and as far as being stagnant there and with Claire, that that area is still mostly pretty stagnant. We did have some characters talk to Carmi about Claire and about how he needs to reach back out to her. And then we had Neil and Ted ambush her at her job <laughs> and tell her, like, Carmi loves you. Like, he's just scared. You're the piece, blah, 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 you know. Um, and, you know, I think it, that's really, like, the, the energy that she brought to the show. There would be, like, these hectic scenes in the restaurant of people, you know, arguing. Um, and then it would, like, pan to an image of Claire. And it's just got, like, this angelic vibe over it and everything. Like, she's literally Carmi's piece. But because he got lost, he feels that he got lost in that and that fucked up his priority which is his restaurant and which is being the best so really it's not claire it's carmy and everything in carmy's head that's getting in the way um it's also making sydney's character stagnant carmy is her entire problem this season if we are being honest yeah. um like from the beginning he's like oh you'll be part owner just sign the agreement and she's like oh uh, uh, uh oh right. you know she like immediately realizes i don't want that 
like you don't listen to me like she's not getting any input um yeah. for the menu or anything on how anything goes like he just tells her like we're changing the menu every day <laughs> and she's like okay um and then she gets an offer uh from the current i think cdc at ever to be his cdc at a new restaurant making ten thousand dollars more starting out than what uh carmy's contract is offering her and she gets full creative control <laughs> And the only thing stopping her from immediately saying yes, clearly, is the emotion, emotional attachment that she has, um, uh, you know, th that has grown for uh, for her and all of these people. Um, and we see it at the end of the season when she cries when they're all having a great time after the restaurant funeral. And then she needs to just, like, step away because she knows that she has to walk away from the bear um but i also wanted to to ask you what you thought about something because at, at the end of the season we see that uh the the review came out and it's got all these adjectives that it shows us and um some are good some are bad so it looks like a mixed review at best and it you know it definitely does not sound like um they got a star and Jimmy was saying, if the review is bad, I'm going to pull the plug. So I almost wonder if we're going to see a shift in the next season and Carmen is going to end up as the CDC or or, um, or as like the sous chef under Sydney and she's going to be his boss. I don't know. I think that would be something cool to see in the next season. A little bit of role reversal. So there was a um there was something that he said and Sydney was so wrapped up on how foolish he's being when he said to her, "I've been failing you. Like you've been trying to keep up with me." And she looked at it like, "Oh, fire me, huh?" <laughs> yeah. Like that's 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 where her mind went, but yeah. I he meant I'm failing. I might need to step further down. Now, I do think the last thing that Carmi said when he looked at the review, he said, F me. Like, no, like, I can't believe this. I think they got a positive. I think they got to start. I do. I, 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 really? I, bear with me. Okay. The reason why I say that, because it's, it, it's genius, because all this crap that Carmi's put them through, all these different shifts and changes and stuff like that to get this star. It lines up. It actually tracks because he knows what it actually takes to do it. Now, his methodology of doing it and his people skills is trash because he doesn't know how to emote or connect with anybody. But I think that that review was positive. And I think they got the star. And I think what he's probably going to do, what why he said F me is because he's like, crap, I need her to kind of be my boss. But now what do I do with this? I think mm. that would be so much more comic gold. Mm. But by the time that it's happened, she's going to be going away. Um, and now this is my whole sentiment about her leaving. I don't think that's going to track or stick. Only reason why I say that is because, first off, in that kind of line of business, the, first, the, the dude that's poaching her, and Will, Will Porter's character said it, like, dude, what are you doing over here? Like, he was, he was like, what? What are you doing over here? Yeah. He's trying to poke somebody from another So You don't do that. Regardless, it, regardless yeah. of you're presenting her a good, you know, offer and whatnot, it's the way that he's going about it mm -hmm. that seems really slimy. And I don't have a good feeling about it. Yeah. Even though it's a good escape for her. It, but unfortunately, it tracks with her. If you go back to the first season, that's one of the things that she's had to go from this to this to this to this. And she's like, crap, I got to do it again. I got to leave again. Yes. And it's unfortunate because Carmi hasn't been reliable, even if he on paper has, he hasn't been emotionally. And that's what she needs. She needs some kind of stability. I think what's going to turn her around is going to be her dad. Mm -hmm. I think honestly, because the thing about it, this whole entire season, like she's been showing her dad, like, look, I can get an apartment. Like I got this together. I'm doing my job. And and like up until, you know, he went to the store and saw her and kind of got the handle like, OK, maybe she can do this. 
-hmm. I think that he looks at like maybe this, maybe she does need the bear. Whether or not she really needs it, needs it. I think that he's going to look at it in a different light than he did before. I just know that things are going to have to change. It can't be like this season. Carmi cannot function like this. And he needs to. It's just annoying to me. I, I hate it to say it. Like it, it, him in the way that he was with everyone, specifically Richie, specifically Sydney. And honestly, this is what really bothered me. He loves his sister, but yet didn't go to the hospital. Yeah. You, we don't see a scene. And then maybe it was the way they wrote it. Maybe it was a trailer yeah. next episode. But he, the next episode, he never said anything about her. He never said anything about, like, oh, I hope the baby's okay. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, dog, like, you yeah. wrote the guy, Carmen. Even Sydney went. Right. Sorry. <laughs> she brought so, the food. <laughs> I'm like, dog, if, if Claire brought you this down bad, you don't need Claire, bro. Mm-hmm. I, that's, and that's the thing that I feel. Like, I don't. I'm, is it Claire I, or is it the, just that he's not ready for love? I, I just don't think in general. <laughs> I think that he needs he needs emotional uh, therapy. He needs uh, heaps of therapy. Because if he if if this continues the way that it is, especially well, you know what? I, I don't know. Maybe by the end of this season, maybe he got the things that he needed because he got a good conversation with um, Olivia Coleman's character at the end and understanding and good perspective on what this is really all about. And it's about the people, right? He's always been trying to like hone my skills, do this, accomplish this. No, it's about the people. That's that's the only way I did this. And then she had he had the conversation with the douchebag, like. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> he had a yeah. real conversation with the douchebag as mm-hmm. to let him know you put me through hell, you put me through immediate trauma. Yeah, I want to kill you. Yeah. What do you have to answer yourself, and he says, "You're welcome. I gave you exactly what you wanted. You said you wanted to be excellent. You are. You said you wanted to be X Y Z. That's what you strive towards. Look at you. Look at the room, Carmen. Look at what you've done." And I'm not gonna apologize for that. And he, he and Carmen, like it was acted so well. Jeremy acted that so well, but he did too. Um, but it's just interesting that Carmen had to get that revelation that way. That all this time you're blaming this dude, you're blaming everybody else around you too, and yet you're not inwardly thinking, I asked for this. This is what I've pursued now. Granted, that douchebag did not, he does not have the right to emotionally abuse anybody or physically abuse anybody. That's wrong. Yeah. Like, if Carmen would have, hypothetically speaking, killed himself, that would have been on that man's life. Like, no, nah, it's not right. But yeah, uh, something ultimately, that... that's something that Carmen has to understand. And I don't think yeah. he, I think he maybe got it at the end of the season. I don't know. I was going to ask your opinion. Do you think that he got a real revelation by the end of the season? Um, I think he heard, uh, uh, you know, something that really stuck out to me at that table. At least I hope he heard it. I hope he wasn't just so busy staring at his old boss with all of that hatred in his heart that he didn't hear it. But one of the chefs at the dinner table said, um, uh, one of the worst things that can happen to you is working for a bad boss because what did she say? She was like that that um unlocks like a very toxic culture that like you are going to end up creating yeah and um literally carmy like he found himself repeating things that his old boss used to say to him um and you know he was throwing tina's food in the trash like it's not it's not perfect if if it's not perfect it doesn't go out that was one of the things um uh, verbatim that that asshole with the glasses said to him that he ended up repeating to um, Tina and, you know, he started to create the same culture at the bear. And, you know, I, Sydney definitely caught on to it. Um, I don't know if she knows exactly how bad his old boss was, but she heard that. And she's like, I don't want to work for a bad boss. Right. Because I don't want to be a bad boss. Right. Um, 
Yeah, and I don't know if that conversation really gave Carmi any kind of closure that he needed. Um, but I hope that, you know, he he takes the words from that girl on the table into more consideration than he did anything that that asshole said to him uh, during that conversation. Because he didn't say anything helpful to him at all. He's just like, oh, you're thinking about me all the time? I never think about you. I gave you, you, you some ulcers? Like, you're welcome. You know, you're a great chef now. <laughs> and it didn't seem like he felt any better after no, that conversation. No, it was zero more or accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my take on that. Yeah, I, I, what I, what I hope happens is, um, I, I don't know. I, I, Will Coulter's character, I hope that he joins the bear. I is really that his do. name? The guy? Uh, no, 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 no. That's the actor's name in real life. Yeah, that's what I meant. This one. Yeah. I, I don't remember his name, but oh. I, I really do hope he actually joins the bear because I think that. He knows, and it's it's interesting. Remember, we were we were talking about the second season. We didn't really go into it, but he is talking to Marcus about a guy that he worked with that he was talking about was so much better. And he realized, yeah. like, I'm just gonna try to follow this guy. Chase. Yeah. Him. We actually get to see those flashbacks when he was working with Olivia Coleman's um, yeah. place and what that actually really looked like and how. Right. You know, is is artsy for artsy as the first episode was. You did get to see that evolution of how. Carmen ultimately became this perfectionist of a chef, mm -hmm. but in the midst of it, like he missed so much. And I think it was something that was said in the very last episode where he was asking, like, what did you think about this during that time? And he's like, you know what? I didn't even think about it. I missed it. And um, I, I, I think that his character has grown so much, too, that I think that it would rub off on Carmen in a good way. Um, and not just that he's a great actor. So I, I kind of really want him to <laughs> I kind of yeah. really want him to be in the second season. I think it he he grown he grew in a good relationship with um Sydney as well. Um and I think that You're talking about the blonde guy. Yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think that he he would add a very interesting little value to the show, um, but specifically for the bear for Carmen, because I think that with him there um he would help with his evolution emotionally because he knows he knows carmen really well he knows that other side of carmen um and he, i think he's also progressing himself as well in a very specific way so i that's what i really hope and he just fits matter of fact i want all these people to join the bear i think yes. that these three on the end they if yeah. they join the crew i would love it listen love richie needs a girlfriend and huh? it's got it. Richie needs a girlfriend, and it's got to be the brunette in this photo. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> that's how I for feel. Sure. For sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I, I think that this shot was very intentional, mm -hmm. and it's just they would fit uh, the way that the bear is going. I could see them all fitting. Yeah, all of them, every yeah. single one of them, and. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I went on a huge no. tangent. I don't know why I went no, no, I think, no, that's an interesting point to bring up because um, I know you think the bear got a good review. I think it was mixed at best. We saw those, uh, the adjectives that were being used there. The, 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 the positive adjectives were positive, but the negative ones were like real, like, oof. Like that is not a review or th those are not adjectives that I would uh, expect to see in a, in a uh, review for a Michelin star restaurant. Um, so I do not think things are good for the restaurant, the bear. Um, I think it might actually be the end of the bear and maybe the people from ever and the bear will come together and make something new. Um, and Carmi will be forced to get used to working in a healthy environment again, where he's not in control of everything. And, um, be forced to humble himself in that respect uh that's that's what i am expecting and would like to see um hold on let me let me see what did that review actually well, the, the bear restaurant review 
Yeah, I, I have a few of them right here. Um, favors both D and confusing, mm -hmm. missing the apprehension, and almost sloppy, mm -hmm. invasive, test complex array, if such dish arrived, they are excellent, short leaving me feeling refreshed, mm -hmm. focus on pushing through culinary, my experience at offering palatable, Denouncing shelf brilliant, disappointing carving, feeling disappointed and down, but consistent. Uh, so it, it's, it's really ambiguous. You don't, because it, it sounds like a know. mixed review. Yeah, and you Jimmy don't really clear. know what the rating will be. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy was clear. He was like, if we need a good review, I'm pulling the plug. Yeah, so but. yeah, that's where my speculation. And it's interesting because they said to be continued. They didn't even end the season with mm. it, it's it said to be continued. So I don't know if they shot more episodes or not, but um I did want to kind of bring up unfortunately Marcus um character. Uh we find out in the very last episode, of course, he got the call that he was worried about, that he was always dreading, and unfortunately his mother had passed. <clears throat> In the second episode, we everybody goes to the funeral and such a powerful scene, um, such a strong actor in his presence in this scene as well. Um, but I just want to give him accolades because throughout throughout the whole season, he's just been strong. Like he's not broken in the midst of everything around him, kind of like shaky. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just been really consistent. He's been there for Carmen. He's been there for... Sydney, he's been there for the 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 bear. Like he's innovating, like he's making dishes. Like he, it's weird because where Carmi kind of went inward with his trauma and then like tooled himself as a chef, he's outwardly dealing with his stuff and processing it, and he's becoming a well refined chef. Like the Marcus that we know from the first scenes is not the Marcus here. Yeah. He's been hungry to learn. Mm -hmm. And he's been refining himself. And it's the polar opposite of the way that Carmi is now, which makes such a great uh, acting uh, for, of course, Jeremy. But for the character, Carmi is such a downward spiral, unfortunately. But. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll use, uh, you know, you bring up Marcus to mention that my favorite quote of this entire season is, if you fuck with Marcus, I will murder you because <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly i think how all of us feel um he's just he's just such a delight um such a good friend genuinely to everybody in the show um my favorite part of uh his eulogy for his mom was when he said that uh when she lost her ability to speak their communication actually got better and at first I was like, yo, what? <laughs> like, right. Where are you going with that? Um, but he said, we had to really pay attention to each other and look really closely at each other. Yeah. Um, and then it pans to Carmi, Sid, and Richie, and they're all having problems communicating with one another. Like Carmi and Richie cannot communicate with one another. They have to communicate through Sydney. Sydney is having issues communicating with Carmi. But then what we see in the very next scene is an example of how Sid Sydney actually does pay attention to Carmi because he brought like a piece of paper over to her. I don't know if it was the menu, but he was like, Why are the margins bigger? And she was like, Oh, it's because you write on the margins, so I made them bigger. Mm. He was like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> so that's that's something I noticed. I was like, oh, shit. And then season two, uh, they were making, you know, food in his apartment, just working on recipes. And then he happens to ask her if he has a, if she has a good relationship with her mom. And she's like, my mom's my mom said he's like, I never knew. She's like, oh, you never asked, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's clear who's paying attention and who is not. Right. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of glossed over for a second, but uh, Sugar had a baby. Yeah, and it took a lot for her to get there. Daggone, she was trying to go out and get some stuff for the for the bear, 
and everybody was freaking not paying attention to this pregnant woman. I was like, and Carmen had told everybody to put their freaking phones in the locker so nobody knew. And she's oh, out that's in traffic. Why. That's why nobody woman, Like her episode that she had, I felt so bad for this woman. And she had, she, I think she, um, <laughs> It was an instinct tool thing that she always does revert back to calling the person she shouldn't, which is her mom. But it's interesting because it all worked out because her mom helped her through in her own way, <laughs> her own yeah. way to get to the finish line she needed. And it, it, it was a really, it's interesting because they dialed down um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character a little bit, especially coming off the last episode. It was such a touching moment yeah. last. So we didn't talk about it. Jamie Lee Curtis, she showed up at the bear mm -hmm. and she was like, I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'd hated Sugar's husband up until that moment. He was like, uh, no, you have to stay. Yeah. And, and he had to kind of hold it in and just keep his mouth shut and mm -hmm. cry it out in front of his wife because he's like, I'm yeah. not going to do this for my wife. I'm not going to mess it up. And this time the mom came through. It was, it was, mm -hmm. I think it was really well done. It was a good episode. It was a, it was a really, interesting one because i was like man that's a lot for sugar to deal with while pregnant yeah. but that was my um that and tina's episode those are actually kind of tied for my favorite episodes uh of this season um there was just so much about it that i loved um i, I mentioned it to you before we hit record but uh right when natalie got into the car she turned on the radio and there was some program talking about how there's five personality types of children of alcoholics and then she said it in unison with the with the radio uh with the narrator of the story enabler hero scapegoat mascot and lost child yeah and then that really put kind of a lot into perspective and um i am going to spend more time uh breaking down like the exact personality types of the three kids you know mikey um, uh, Nat and Carmi just for fun. Um, but there were several things I loved about that episode. I, I thought it was really notable how, um, you know, you, you mentioned something about how she was picking favorites and Sugar asked her like, what was it like giving birth to Mikey? Mm -hmm. And she described like just a very beautiful birth, you know, and everything she said every word she said was like it was coded with like this warm and fuzzy tone and then sugar's like what about carmy mm. and she was like oh my god yeah it was horrible <laughs> you know right, right. like she like it was just clearly not a good experience so that shift in tone was something that i uh really noticed it's like you know if that's the first thing that she thinks about when just you know uh, when it comes to the birth of her son, you know, um, raising him yeah, with borderline personality disorder and alcoholism mm -hmm. and no therapy to help you deal with those issues. Uh, right. You know, it's a recipe for, for disaster. Right. Like, absolutely a recipe for disaster. Um, I, I really thought it was such a beautiful episode. Um, I, you know, as a woman, I've, I, I'm not a mom, but I would like to be one day and I can't imagine giving birth without, without my mother right there next to me, you know, mm -hmm. to walk me through that. Um, oh. And yeah, so it was like, really, I think, I think I cried watching the episode. Like it really got to me just, just as, just as a woman um, mm -hmm. with her, like, you know, teaching her how to breathe through it. And then that song that she played for Natalie and was singing to her, um, it was just yeah it was very healing uh in a lot of ways i think you know both for the characters and probably for a lot of people watching it too yeah 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 i i did want to give uh, a little bit of credit to richie um uh, richie's the man yeah she had to deal with all of Carmi's foolishness had to deal with this beautiful man and josh hartnett being the person that he's competing yeah. with yeah and he has to play it so cool and josh hartnett playing it so cool but i think it was um episode uh crap what was the episode number i think it was episode three doors mm. doors was not only it honestly i think it was the best directed episode 
Hmm. Because it felt like a horror movie for chefs. Carmi put them through hell Mm. with the changing of these menus. Every Mm -hmm. single night, they're sitting there changing the menu, having to clean up, changing the menu, clean up. It's like if you, if you kind of like if you use like napkins as an example, the opposite side of that, you wanted to kind of think about being a chef and owning a restaurant. You looked at doors, people may no longer actually even try because that was. Yeah. It was it was done so well that it felt like a horror movie. Like every single door that was open and changed, like they were just getting mm-hmm. worse and worse. They were getting through it, but it was just so much turmoil that I was like, I felt bad for them. Like I think at one point Tina was like, Do we have to clean this every night? He's like, every night. And I was like, yeah. Dog, like you, you this is not they're gonna break. And literally yeah. everybody started dropping stuff. People mm-hmm. started getting cuts. People started mm-hmm. like messing up the orders, messing up the food. The front house was arguing with the back house. Like, yeah, it was worse than how it was the first season. Yeah. And, um, but that I, I, I have to give Richie credit because honestly, the last episode of season two, if Richie hadn't stepped up, they would have lost day one. Yeah. And he's rolled with every single punch throughout the season. I, I, I think the unfortunate thing is I feel like he just was rolling with the punches the whole season. There wasn't that memorable episode for him because Carmen was just being a douchebag to him the whole entire time. And I I don't know. Like I felt like a lot of characters were just kind of left there, either one, to be fo- positive reinforcement humor or two, just to roll with the punches. And I think from a narrative standpoint, it makes you feel like we're just all trapped in Carmi's fridge. <laughs> like we're not going anywhere. And that's yeah. really the issue to have with the season. It's not that it wasn't directed well. It's not that the cinematography wasn't great. It wasn't that the acting was bad. It's that the characters and the characters' motivations are just stuck in the past. Mm-hmm. And because the main character's pivot point is that Everybody else is not progressing past where they need to. The moment that they opened the store should have been like, well, how do we do this? I wrote down, I got to find it, um, something. Um, what did you think about, like, overarching thoughts of the season? And what was your rating of it? So, um, I think I said in the beginning, um, I did feel that, you know, and that that maybe they weren't ready to move the story um, too far forward. So they were taking their time, moving back a little bit and um, just really, you know, stewing in the tensions between the characters. Um, So I was a little bit frustrated with uh, just kind of the pacing in that sense. Um, but there wasn't a single episode that I did not enjoy watching. Um, I, you know, this this show really makes you love these characters and be so invested in every part of their lives. Um, just everything from Richie and whether or not he'll go to uh, uh, his ex's wedding. Um, and that scene where he's, <laughs> you said, like, talking to Frank on the porch. And he's like, man, this is the guy I, I lost Tiffany to. Um, and then to the bigger things, like, you know, what what do the reviews say? Um, and small things like John Cena. Oh, my God. John Cena was so great <laughs> in that little cameo, the haunting thing. It was, like, ridiculously funny. Um yeah, I don't know. I think I would give this season maybe an 8 out of 10. Not quite as good as first and second seasons, but still solid and enjoyable. Um, and I'm I'm very much ready to see uh, where these characters are going to go from here. Because like you said, they've kind of remained a little stagnant. No. Yeah. I, I, so I wrote this out because I kind of wanted to define to in my head what mm-hmm. each season was. So for the first season, I wrote hopelessness from tragedy transformed to hope by the end of the first season. Mm-hmm. Second season, I wrote hope becoming a true dream, but with a question mark. 
And then what I wrote for the third season is a dream becomes stagnant <laughs> because of fear and unresolved pain. Yeah. And that's legit. There you go. Because I feel like we're just getting through this season just to get to the fourth season. To be that's honest. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate to say that. Yeah. But it's true. Like, I mm-hmm. I know if I'm going to go and rewatch this season. Whereas, like, I can go from the first episode, first season, go all the way to the second season, and I'm like, yeah, I might watch some episodes here or there. But that, that's that's unfortunately how I feel. And I don't know if it was they just were, you know, within a year, they're trying to get it done really quickly, and they needed more time to write. Um, yeah. But it just it just didn't hit the way that it should. And again, like, this, I mean, coming off of, you know, stagnant, like, I am curious to see where it's going to go, but I'm more intrigued in another season than I'm intrigued with the season I'm watching. I, I think that's the yeah. um, truth of season three. Mm-hmm. I, if I rated it, I mean, the first, the second season to me was a 10 or a plus, whatever. This season, I think would maybe like be uh, on the low end, of 8.5 on a high end of nine. Yeah. If I gave it a, a rating, like maybe a B or a B plus. So. Yeah, not bad. It's just it, it it should be a lot better in that they the pacing feels like it's going nowhere because the the story is stagnant. Mm-hmm. That's that's really how I feel, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know if it's because it's a thirty minute, you know, thirty minute episode show. Um, I don't know if they would benefit from doing like hour long episodes, like ten hour long episodes per season um yeah the pacing they yeah we both agree they definitely hit the brakes um for one reason or another uh it's it still has <laughs> yeah, no it's not because of claire <laughs> it's not it's her not. it's all carmy <laughs> it's all it's all in carmy's head he needs therapy the boy needs therapy and there's no shame in that man he Cindy couldn't even get cook it done the whole season. she didn't know how to cook with the team she, until she made an omelet <laughs> <laughs> that would no that was season two <laughs> she made the omelet in season two. Oh, okay this season she was she wasn't really cooking she was trying to give her input on the menu, but yeah. Carmi was mostly making all the decisions. Um, and she was just kind of like, you know, running expo. Um, but yeah, the problem is that, you know, she's supposed to be a partner and there's no clear partnership. Not at all. Yeah. And she's getting, she got offered another partnership that is basically like less of a partnership, more like she just gets paid more to run the show. And, you know, yeah, have uh, maybe one person above her, but that's it. Like, it's her I, I restaurant. Don't trust that joint. I, don't, I don't trust that douchebag. I'm sorry. He, it's a little he, bit too good to be true. Um, and he did, like, he did say, like, I would want to talk to Carby about it. It's like, I don't know if that's going to make it better, bro. But, well, like... Well, it was the way that he said it, he was like, well, have you, uh, you know, he's like, are you ready? Like, he, at a certain point, he was like, are you ready? You know, he didn't even say, have you talked to Carby anymore? He was like, are you ready? Like, I'm like... Or he was like, "Are you?" And she was like, "Still thinking about it." And he was like, "Okay, yeah, because I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this thing going. Let me know." Yeah, but you above know? all that, we got John Cena, another flat. <laughs> so great, so great, so hilarious. I never thought that I, like, I've never been like a wrestling fan, mixed martial arts, uh, whatever you you would call exactly what John Cena did. Was he WWE or was he UFC? uh yeah wwe wwe yeah um but oh my god i love him as an actor he's so funny like he's so comedically gifted um he's got like a face that makes me want to (laughs) laugh you know what i mean um i think he had that effect on me when i watched suicide squad the 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 james gunn suicide squad movie he was standing there like a gi joe action figure while amanda waller was you know um basically giving his character exposition and it was just like he was just making me laugh standing there doing nothing yeah. and yeah he um yeah he he did so great he did so great i loved the little fact family lore with the haunting stuff yeah hilarious yeah but i think we went over everything that was yeah. our thoughts on season three um hated to love it they're still on top 
They're still one of the best shows, period. Um, but Ryan, right, where can everybody find your content? Um, on Twitch and also now on YouTube under the name Only X Anchors. Uh, follow me if you guys like video games at all. I play basically everything. It's true that only people who don't like themselves play. <laughs> what is that? Did you click on my video? Stop. <laughs> I was like, that's my voice. <laughs> Yeah, my first video is up. It's just for laughs. So it's me playing Elder Ring, dying a lot. I do beat the boss though. So let's play. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll be back for more dragons or possible, you know, crazy boys or maybe even a ring or two. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye, guys. Ain't nothing on